So obviously the title of this video is the most lethal aircraft in general aviation history, the Beechcraft Bonanza. And I realize that's a little clickbaity, but first, before we get into that. Thank you for choosing Golden Chick. Would you like to try our Buffalo Ranch chicken sandwich today? Uh, no, thank you. Could I get a big and wicked with the jalapeno poppers uh, and an unsweet tea? Sure, did you want to add cheese? I do. What else can I get for you? That will be all. Thank you so much. So my stepson actually works here, so I'm here to mess with him, obviously, because what else would you do? That's him. I knew it. I was like, this guy sounds, I know this. I know you, you're famous. <laughs> yep. All right, here's down a lot. So behind me sits one of the most beautiful, one of the most iconic, and one of the best performing aircraft in general aviation. That is the Beechcraft Bonanza. Now there's a lot of different models to the Beechcraft Bonanza and some different variants of the airframe, such as the V-35, which would be your V-tail, an F-33, which is what this is, an A-36, which is a six place, and also kind of sort of the Baron, which is the same fuselage, but it is a twin, and that's actually gonna be a 58 or a 53, but, or not a 53, a 55, but it is, like I said, it's the same fuselage, so, why do so many people give this aircraft a reputation of being one of the most deadly and one of the most dangerous aircraft out there? Well, for that, we need to go back in time. We need to go back to the 60s and 70s and 80s, long before Cirrus or Velocities or any of those other aircraft were really all that popular. And if you look at the Bonanza, I want you to think of it as two things. One, the best performing aircraft on the market, and two, a status symbol, like an Apple product or a Starbucks coffee. If the 57 Bel Air Chevy had a counterpart in aviation, it would have been this aircraft. It is incredibly popular for two main reasons, in my opinion. One, it is very, very comfortable to sit in. It's big, there's lots of headroom, there's lots of shoulder room, it's very comfortable upright, you're not laid out, and two, it performs very, very, very well. It is very fast, when I say fast, we're talking like 160 knots, somewhere in that area, right? But it performs very, very, very well. And in my opinion, it's also a pretty stable airplane and somewhat forgiving. So how did such an innocuous aircraft that is very well built, it's very robust in its structure and in the way it's built, how did it earn a reputation of being so deadly? Well, in my opinion, back when these aircraft were primarily purchased in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, again, like I said, before the Cirrus was ever a thought, right? The people who could afford these aircraft was doctors, which is where it gets the reputation of being a doctor killer. So if this was an aircraft that you wanted, you had to be a doctor or lawyer or somebody with some pretty serious change in your pocket to be able to afford it, even back in those days. And because of this, I feel that a lot of your doctors and dentists would go out and get their pilot's license get you know 50 60 hours whatever it was in a cessna 172 or a piper cherokee or some sort of similar aircraft and then would immediately go out and buy a bonanza because it was their dream aircraft but when you're jumping from an aircraft like a 172 or a cherokee to a bonanza it's like tossing a 16 year old boy the keys to a corvette that's not going to end well, he's going to crash it. And that's kind of the same thing here. It's a very quick airplane. So it's very easy to get behind the aircraft when you're flying, especially when you're flying in severe weather like thunderstorms or some sort of IFR condition. And I think for that reason is there was a lot of pilots who were somewhat inexperienced who got in the cockpit because they could afford the aircraft and felt they deserved the aircraft and they, they did and they do. But when it actually came time to being able to or being qualified to operate it, they were perhaps a little lacking on their skills in the pilot seat. So why, in my opinion, is it not this way anymore? And the first thing I'd like to say is that 
insurance has taken over the world. Now you can still buy an aircraft and you can still fly without insurance. There's nothing that says you have to have a full coverage insurance policy on your aircraft, but that is really, really risky if you run into a situation like what happened with this, where you have a prop strike and now you're spending 35, 40,000 out of pocket to fix the aircraft. So just about anybody with a brain is going to be carrying an insurance policy on their aircraft. And if it is something you finance, you might end up financing somewhere in the $1,000 a month range for your payment on a $130,000, $140,000 aircraft because the loan terms are kind of long. But when you call up your insurance and you say, hello, Mr. Insurance Man, I would like one bonanza. He's going to tell you, tell you how many hours do you have time and type. And if you say something like 100, 150 hours, and you don't have a lot of experience in a pilot seat period, let alone in a high performance retractable aircraft with a constant speed propeller, you might find that your insurance cost is more than your monthly payment on the aircraft. And that is going to seriously deter you from buying it. Because if you're spending a thousand to two thousand dollars a month in insurance for the policy, plus a thousand dollars a month for the payment on the aircraft and the five hundred dollars a month or whatever it is in your area to keep it in a hangar, very quickly that airplane got very, very, very expensive. And I think this keeps a lot of people from getting into a situation like they did back in the day where they bought an airplane that was maybe a little bit more than they could chew and they ended up in a situation. Now, again, I will say that I absolutely love the Bonanzas. They are great aircraft. They're big, they're comfortable, they're nice to fly. It's like moving around in a Chevy Tahoe. They have some drawbacks because their weight, yeah, they, they only carry four people. There's nothing forward of the pilot seat to load for the CG, so it's hard to keep them in their CG range, especially when they're a straight tail like this because there's a couple hundred more pounds back there. And you end up uh, you end up with a very, very good aircraft that's very robust, but there are some drawbacks to it, just like anything else. However, I think I made the comparison. This is kind of like a Chevy Tahoe. This is a, a big, comfortable aircraft, and I would say something like a Mooney, for example, is more like a Mustang. It's still comfortable, but it's going to be really compact and really small and really squished down. So I think the Bonanza is always going to hold a special place in our hearts in general aviation. It will always be the status symbol that it's always been. It takes a certain caliber of person to want a Bonanza and to fly a Bonanza. They are not for everyone. So with all that said, if you disagree with any of what I have said in this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. Just make sure as always that you keep it respectful and that you keep it um, polite. I am going to go ahead and finish up doing this annual inspection on this thing and return it to airworthiness. Thanks again so much for watching. Don't forget to leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, join me on uh, the Discord, follow me on Instagram, go build something and be easy.